Good afternoon, folks, and thanks for joining us. Welcome to Kickboxing with Tim and the Mechanic. My name's Tim Wheaton, joined as always by the one and only, the Mechanic, Brandon Catino. How are you doing today, sir? Doing good, man. It's always good to be talking kickboxing with you. Man, it doesn't get better than this. We're talking kickboxing. You have a fight upcoming, professional, main event upcoming. Tell the folks everything about this fight. Yeah, you know, uh, May 20th, I'm back in action. Uh, it's just me and Zach Kelly. We're going to run it back. Say we were supposed to fight on February 18th. But, you know, some things came up where, where we just weren't able to fight. So we're just going to run it back. Keep it going. Same weight, 165. Uh, yeah, man, dude, we're, 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 we are under four weeks. Uh, I'm excited, man. I'm ready to go. This is on Gut Check Promotion. Now, if people want tickets or people uh, are looking to watch the event, how do we get into it? How do we, how do we get more info like that? Yeah, um, I do have tickets. So, hey, man, you contact me if, if, you're, if you're in the area. You know, hit me up, man. You say just message me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, I'll get back to you. Or if you can't make it for some reason, you can always watch it on uh, FCLTV.com. Uh, I think it's, what did I say? Was was it 20? I think it was twenty four ninety nine, dollars like that for the pay-per-view. That's good. That's a good deal. And that's May 20th, Gut Check Promotions. That is absolutely awesome stuff, man. Game plan for this one. How's training coming along? How's the body feel? I know you were in peak condition just a few weeks ago. How's it coming into this fight? Yeah, nah, man, I feel good. Like I said, uh, you know, I, I did this sparring yesterday. Did uh, did about five five rounds. I got got five rounds in good. You know, three minutes. I had some guys really really pushing the pace on me. Uh, you know, and I and I felt good. So, uh, yeah, man, just uh, game plan, man, is always just violence and get a W. That's it. Man, absolutely awesome stuff. Top American kickboxer. This is going to be out of Newark here on May twentieth, seven p.m. local time. And if people want tickets, you're the guy to contact, right? Exactly. I'm the guy. Please hit me up for tickets. Awesome stuff. Now we got tons of kickboxing to get to today. We'd have a Rings of Venus, a one championship, a rise event. Uh, we have a glory event that we'll be previewing. And then we have fan questions as well. We got tons to talk about. Y'all said to jump in, sir. Oh, you know it. All right. A couple of weeks ago, we had the K1 Rings of Venus. Uh, they did this once last year. Uh, it had like Connor Silverwolf. It had a tournament on it as well. This year, the special event was a, a Japan versus Korea. So the top fights were all uh, top three fights were all Japan versus Korea. Had fighters like Seho, Kira, Mao were all on it. And it did go 3-0 and to Japan. And it's great to see an all-female card. You caught some of the fights. Brandon, what were your impressions of these? And not, you know, it's just, it, it's just, to me, I think it is a pretty cool concept where, you know, K1 just let, is giving the ladies a, a, a time to shine where they basically have their own, their own car, their own event, you know, it's yeah. ladies only, uh, you know, and this, in this way, this way, you know, you kind of, you kind of get to see, you know, the, 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 uh, the future, uh, you know, of the women's division. You also get to see, you know, how the uh, talent is looking. And also too, there's a chance for, you know, like I said, uh, you know, uh, a, 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 a future champions and uh future stars yeah absolutely it, it's a ton of fun uh good fights on the card uh it was really uh huge last year this year was another good addition but i think it'll keep building from here they're going to make it an annual thing uh, each one out this was part of the crush series uh but yeah it was a fun one japan went three and oh so yeah it was a fun little event Japan all day, baby. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we also had a one championship just this past weekend. And sometimes fight cards happen. Man, this past weekend was just insane, right? Like sometimes weekends happen where it's just par for the course. Nothing really exciting happens. Or just, yeah, the, the regular people win. This fight, past fight weekend, it was like we moved mountains in terms of how many storylines we had coming out. And arguably the biggest storyline was Jonathan Hegarty looking sharp, looking flawless, getting a first round knockout against Nongo it, to win the bantamweight Muay Thai world title. This was shocking. Like I, I didn't pick him going in and I did, wouldn't have ever picked him to win that dominantly. He interrupts Nongo's like seven fight consecutive win streak with five or six knockouts consecutively. Uh, he, he's one of those guys that people were talking about of the modern era. Maybe he's one of the greats of Muay Thai. Jonathan Eggerty put a stop to that. What were your impressions? What were your thoughts on this one? Yeah, man. I mean, anybody that well, you know, well, you know, like say ever since we started the show that I've been on the uh, John Haggerty hype train. You know, he's one of the guys that I liked and I talked about that I knew that you know he would he could definitely do something and won. And mm -hmm. and Friday night, man, that was that, that 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 was his coming out moment. That was his time to shine, and and he took it. Uh, like I said, man. I mean, dude, you, like, you watch this guy train, man. The dude has the dude has speed, speed for days, and that's what it was, man. To me, man, it was the first round. He knew. He knew usually, like I said, usually like tight fighters, you know, they come out slow. You know, they kind of want to set the pace. Harry D said, nah, forget that. We're, I'm jumping you right off the bat. 
Use his speed, use his hand combinations, man. Boxing, boxing, and boxing is what is really what won him the fight right here. Uh, you know, I really, you know, I mean, usually, like, I know, I know John Haggy, you know, for for his speedy kicks, but I want to say in this in this one, man, he just he he just he just went all hands. And it was insane. It was flawless. Like Nongo, we've seen him in trouble in the past and he always rallies back, but he can knock people out with head punches, body punches. He has knockouts via leg kicks. He can be a great counter striker. Typically aggressive strikers uh, fall into his traps, but not Jonathan Hegarty. And and it's just an crazy ride that he had. His story is not yet done. And I think that's the biggest piece of the puzzle where we saw him lose against Rod Tang. These guys were like 23 and 21. Now Jonathan Eggerty is still only 26 years old, picks up a title in a bigger weight class. He's still developing. He's still getting better. And from here, he's only going to get better. The story's not done on Jonathan Haggerty. And that's the crazy part. Like at this point, if they, it, let's say Rod Tang is still struggling with weight at the old weight class. If he went up in weight, him versus Haggerty is a different fight now. Am I crazy here? No, nah, man, no, I really, I really would probably say like, that's probably the fight that people want to see, you know, like I said, uh, you know, saying usually in kickboxing and Muay Thai, it's all about, it's all about uh, trilogies, rematches, you know, uh, so I mean, this, this would be nothing new. And like I said, this would probably be a fight that people would, would want to see. Man, yeah. I, and what's next for Nago? I'm not entirely sure. It sounds like he still wants to fight with one championship. Him and one have had like a, a salty cold relationship but he was he was signed as a champion he was signed as like an evolve mma um instructor and stuff like yeah. that so he was very much in one and it seems like he's cutting ties and now that he's lost the title genuinely i don't know if he's staying in one from from what we're hearing it, he is going to be but uh i don't know rws is out there and they're always having really good muay thai we'll see where he ends up uh it sounds like haggerty though <clears throat> Uh, it was a bad weekend if you're a, a fan of Thai Muay Thai, as Felipe Lobo was able to uh, earn a victory uh, on the same card against Sempech. So Felipe Lobo is probably the the title contender against Hegarty, and then people want Hegarty to fight Liam Harrison. What do you think of the timeline? Does it make sense? Does that get you excited at all? Does that get you off the couch? Yeah, I mean, dude, any anytime man, do you get these fights in here, man? Like say against. People, people who are who are daring to be great, why not? You know, like this, this, this is what this is what, this is what we want as fight fans. We want, want we want people daring to be great. We got legends on one, you know, but you got up and comers and you got mm -hmm. legends on the other side. Uh, you know, what I'm saying these these are the type of fights that you want to see. And plus two, if it was if it was a Liam Harris Harrison uh, Jonathan, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Haggerty fight. That's basically two guys from England basically kind of kind of carrying muay thai like that would be crazy that's insane you know it would be such a yeah go ahead go ahead no i was gonna, i was gonna say you know two dudes from england over here really really representing the sport of muay thai man yeah this is what's one some i forget what thai fighter was talking about it but he was saying at one point like almost 15 years ago like foreigners are going to take over muay thai because they just train differently and there's there's all sorts of different factors but a lot of people in Thailand are not getting into Muay Thai just because of the reputation that the sport has. Like it's a lot of people who are gambling yeah. uh, is into the sport of Muay Thai. So the people who are really excelling in Muay Thai right now are people from other countries who are getting into it. Like it is crazy to think that Liam Harrison and Jonathan Haggerty are two of the bigger names in Muay Thai. And there was always great foreigners in the past, like John Charles Skarbowski and people like this. But now it just, it just looks more like a takeover than it ever has before. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, Haggerty, Harrison, it does feel like a little bit of a wrestling putting one guy over the top. You know, the old veteran and the young guy it is a passing the torch moment, right? Yeah, exactly. But that's that's how it is. I mean, that's when you know if somebody if somebody is really is really ready to a, to a take over or not. Oh man, absolutely. Uh, we also had on this card uh, catchweight Muay Thai Asa Ten Pao just going all violent in this one, getting a win against Han Ji Hao. Man, our boy, friend of the show, Asa Ten Pao. What'd you think of his fight getting a knockout win? Yeah, man, it was good. It was good for Asa Ten Pao. Like I say, I know, I know he had some uh, some uh, adversity in the beginning because I think uh, he he did get knocked down, but then yeah. he came back, dusted himself off, and he came back, and 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 then he got the finish at the end. Uh, you know, hey man, you know I love. Uh, I love Asa Asa Tempau doing doing Muay Thai. Uh, you know, it'd be it'd be it'd be cool if he, if he got some kickboxing matches in. But I know I know I think he had talked afterwards about maybe doing a uh, MMA fight. But you know, hey man, why man? Just you know, just just keep smashing people in Muay Thai and kickboxing. 
He wants the triple crown. No one's ever done it. Muay Thai, kickboxing, and MMA. And he's he has experience and wins in all of those uh, as well. Uh, we also had over the weekend uh, one Friday fight. It was a good Muay Thai fight out of Lumpindi Arena. Ba- uh, uh, pai Dang was able to get a win over Batman in a very close fight. Uh, there were some very fun fights. Uh, let me just give it. Tong Poon had a really good win. Uh, there was a spinning back elbow win from Alif as well. Uh, Rambo Lek got a knockout win. So if you miss any of those, you can find them on YouTube and they were quite fun. Did you catch any of the One Friday Fight series? I know they're not in your time zone. You know, unfortunately I didn't because I it's in the morning and usually in the morning yeah. that's training. So I, yeah. so I had to get up and just and just get ready to get ready to go train. Yeah, I, we won't cover them too extensively, but it's always fun stuff. Let's move forward to uh, from the talking points. This was one. This seemed like this had the most talking points coming out of it. Rise one six seven with a knockout of the year contender, like a leader for knockout of the year. Uh, the 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 main event, blah blah blah. It was a majority decision, a little bit boring. That's fine. But the co-main event, spinning back kick knockout, Kazuki. Osaki gaining the Iska title. This is his year so far. Kazuki Osaki had now has three knockout wins in 2023. Brother, it is April and he has three knockout wins. Kazuki Osaki out here just styling on people. What is going on? What were your thoughts on this fight and, and, and the event, of course? Yeah, no, nah, it was it was a good fight. You know, like I said, t- you know, title fight. So he was going all out. You know, he was trying to get this belt. And man, he did not, he did not hold anything back, man. Looked sharp from, from the beginning. Same yeah. nice, crisp, and then boom, man. And then also too, I'm saying the way the way how he did with the knockout, you know, adding adding the kick in there, man, putting some flair on it. You know, basically I'm saying, you know, you want to make a statement, that right there is a statement right there. And uh yeah, man, I, I can't I can't wait. I can't wait to see his his uh, his uh, next title fight. Man, and it, it, yeah, that's the thing, which is it, it's such an exciting fighter, three knockouts, and he is among the smallest weight class that you can get in these in, in Rise or K1. And it's one of the best. Like the other guys that he's fighting is like Toma Kuroda, Kasane Nagai, Ryu, uh, Yodzilla. Like there's people like this. It's just such an exciting weight class. A uh, ton of fun. Uh, Ken Nakamura in the main event was able to uh, retain his title against Naoki Tanaka. Kenta was able to get a win. I, I believe Ring Girl. Uh, Kanon Miyahara made her debut, I believe, as well. Yeah. What were some of the other notes yeah. that you had coming out? Uh, tell me a little bit more about Rise One Six Seven here. No, I was going to say, yeah, just with the ringer, I think she made her debut and she actually got, she actually got, uh, got a stoppage in it. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was just crazy with her. I mean, her whole story about one about fighting because I think she was minding her business. I think it was the promoter that said, like, oh, hey, you know, you're going to fight one day, and then she was just like, um, okay, sure, you know. So she's like, you know, she did the training and everything. But uh, just talk about the main event, man. Dude, the main event was a close fight. Uh, it really could have went either way. I kind of felt, you know, it, it, I think it's really just, you know, what, what it is that you were looking at, what it is that you, what you saw more of. But I mean, I'm happy with uh, uh, Nakamura uh, getting the uh, W. You know, I'm fine with that. Uh, you know, I, I think, I think, I think me looking at it, I think I actually did have it for uh, Tanaka. But yeah. like, but like I said, no, it was it was a close fight. We got and new, and new, so oh, sorry, you, never and know. Yeah, you never know. I mean, it could be a close fight. So I mean, they could maybe rematch down the road. You know, I would be down for that. Man, the thing is, it, it's it's a fun division. Yeah, sorry, I didn't realize that. I, I thought it was and new. I thought he retained the title. My bad. That's my bad on that one. Uh, that was for the sixty three kilogram title. Uh, yeah, it was a majority decision. So like you said, it was close enough that one judge was giving it a draw. I'm surprised that it didn't go to draw rounds based on what I'm here. I always love draw rounds. I know I feel like fighters hate them, but I like them a lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anything else from Rise One Six Seven that you saw that you like that you want to talk about? Uh, I mean, just you know, it was it it was good fights. You know, like I said, I mean, dude, like just the co-main event is really <laughs> I know <laughs> it's really what it's about, but uh, but yeah, nah, like I said, I mean, you know, um, was it um, yeah, like you said, we we were talking about the ring girl. That was really kind of really one of the main other things. Other than that, other than that, I mean, everything else, you know, was it it was a it was a good card. It was decent. Yeah. Just what an insane year Kazuki Osaki's having. That's that's this, this insane thing. Uh, let's move forward. We are previewing the weekend. Uh, are, are we, we're back next week, right? Are we, are we going to do one this this? Yes, week? yeah, we're going to do one this week, and then we're going to do one next week as well to make up because next week would yeah. would have been our normal time. Yeah, because there's a ton. Because we'll talk about like uh, post glory, the one championship event. There's tons of stuff going on that yep. week. Uh, uh, even RWS is going to have a big tournament. So let's let's talk about all that next week, like you said. But let's preview upcoming this weekend. I can't believe it's just days away. 
I feel like we've been talking about and previewing this for so long. I can't believe Glory 85 is just around the corner. It's this weekend, April 29th. Let's say, uh, let, let's do a quick touch on some of the fights on the card, and then we'll do the heavyweight tournament. Does that work? All right, cool with me. All right. Andy Semler against the former champion, Mertel Gronhart. This will be um, the, for the welterweight championship. It's a bit of a tough one because I feel like of all, welterweight is a really cooking division. It's a very good one. Mertel Gronhart maybe wasn't the fight that we all wanted, but it's the fight that we now have. How do you see this one going? What, how do you see it going? Yeah, it's just kind of like what we what we were just talking about before about, um, you know, um, uh, a legend and a young guy. You know, like I say, I mean, this is somebody too, like Mertel Gronhart hasn't been kickboxing. He's been doing MMA. So how so how is it that he's going to be? I mean, I think I, I saw... I think he did when he did the um, uh, Instagram takeover for the questions. I think he was like, mm-hmm. "Oh, you know, it felt it feels it feels like I never left, you know." But but that but that, but that's because you know he has been kickboxing for a really long time. So it's like, hey, you go away from it, you come back, you know. It's it's just it's just like riding a bike, you know. You'll pick up on it real quick. Um, but mm-hmm. I really want to say I feel like this is a fight that I really want to say that the brass, you know, probably wants Andy Samler to win. Like he's their guy. He's the future star. Uh, mm-hmm. So. I'm probably too. I'm going with similar as well. Like I said, you know, Murtu Gruner has been doing MMA. Similar has been staying active. Yes, though similar did have a close fight, his title fight, which which is really what I thought was going to happen. They were they were going to do a rematch with uh, Nabiov, but yep. But hey, they they want to go with Grunhardt. I'm saying Grunhardt, Grunhardt is a name. Uh, he's a star. They're in they're in the Netherlands, so you know he'll definitely help pack the place. Uh, but yeah, no, nah, I think I think it's gonna be similar, man. I think it's gonna be two guys that are gonna go out there and bang, man. Saying so you got it, got a guy, you got a guy whose nickname is Bad News, you got another guy whose nickname is the Predator. So to me, <laughs> to me, somebody, somebody, somebody's getting stopped. Uh, I'm most likely going with Grunhard's gonna get stopped in maybe the second or third round. Uh, I, I'll, okay, I'll take Andy Semler. I'm not gonna pick against Andy Semler. He's he's yeah. a he's he's on an incredible win streak notable wins in that time he's a patient calm striker uh but yeah no i'll take similar but there's not a bad pick in this fight well the welterweight division in glory is cooking right now so it's gonna be a ton of fun light yeah, wait, heavyweight i think i might have said it wrong but no i i too am picking similar i'm t- i'm picking similar to stop oh sorry i gotcha, gotcha. To, to, to stop to, to stop Greenhart in the second or third round i like to, i think it's gonna be in still Sorry, I think I was reading Gronhart and I was like, oh, he picked Gronhart. But yeah, we're both on the Andy Semler train, friend of ours. He's a good guy. Uh, let's go down to Michael Dute is going to be fighting Mohamed Amine. Michael Dute is a, a, a veteran kickboxer. This is going to be a light heavyweight fight. If you've watched any glory cards in the past, you've seen Michael Dute fight. Uh, he's going to be fighting Mohamed Amine, who uh, doesn't have a ton of kickboxing fights. <laughs> so what do you think of this match? I mean, it's one of those things where, like, with Michael Duke, man, you don't know which Duke you're going to get. Like, you get the guy who, <laughs> who straight up came out guns a-blazing and just manhandled the uh, the uh, the uh, four-man tournament he was in where, where, where I mean, he just, he just had the two finishes. Or you yeah. get the Michael Duke who could just do stupid stuff and be like, yo, what's the <laughs> guy? Like, it's the truth. But the thing is, like, to me, man, like, to me, with the way how, with the, way how the light heavyweight division is, to me, man, Michael Duke could get a W here and he could probably get a title shot. So, to me... Michael Duke, be smart, go out there, do your thing, get this finish in the first or second round and claim and 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 and, and stake your claim for, for a title shot. I'm picking Michael yeah. Duke to win. Uh I mean to me, knockout, not knockout's the only thing, man. Dude, you put you you put Michael Duke on the card, you know it's fireworks. Either 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 he's putting somebody to <laughs> sleep or or he's getting put to sleep. Just to co-sign with you on that. I have no doubt uh, on that one. Uh, going down the card, we have a featherweight fight. Both guys, I feel like, in a must-win situation. Both guys coming off losses. Uh, we have Berjan Peposhi versus Jan Kaffa. Uh, both experienced fighters in glory. Uh, I, I'm not really sure who to pick in this one. Uh, what, do you, what do you think? Do you have any thoughts, feelings on this one? Yeah, no, I'm probably going to go with, um, was it, uh, Papashi. Because he actually, Papashi, is, yeah. he actually is ranked, while Kaffa is not ranked. So, yeah. you know, so... So I mean, if he wants to, if he wants to keep his ranking, and again to me as well, like again to me, these I feel like majority of these divisions, like a win or two, but maybe yeah. even one win, you can get a title shot over here. You know, like so to me, man, you want you want you want to stay in that hunt. So to me, man, you need to win out here, especially if you're ranked. If you're not ranked like Kafa, you're gonna have to get you're gonna have to beat him to get ranked and then probably and, and, and then they probably, probably want another another match to, to 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 come close to getting the title shot. Well that's the thing. I've like both of these guys are in a must win scenario. They could 
you know, potentially fight, be fighting in a different organization if they lose. Whereas like uh, Berjan Poposhi, the guy who beat him, Ahmed Sheikh Musa, is in a title shot. So like it's a, it's a small enough division where, like you said, you could be two wins away from a title shot. You, either of these guys might be one win away from a title shot against uh, Patch. So it, it has stakes going into it. Uh, Mur- Murat Agun, and I'm always going to say it wrong, is going to be fighting Nikola Filipovic. Uh, this is going to be for the heavyweight tournament reserve fight, but uh, this is a sluggers fight. This is a banger right here. Murat Agun was just fighting for a title in one championship. Now he's in glory again. Nikola Filipovic, I couldn't find a ton on him. I believe he's a Waco champion, a Waco European kickboxing champion coming into this fight. Uh, I couldn't find a ton on him though, but it's going to be a knockout for one of these guys. What do you think of this one? Yeah, no, like, like, like you said, man. This is just um, anytime you see heavyweights on there, you just know big boy, big boys are coming to bang. So somebody, like you said, uh, might, might, uh, might be going night night. Oh man, we're looking forward to it. Uh, let's get into the heavyweight tournament brackets itself. Uh, tournaments are, are a fun thing. I love the storylines coming in and out of tournaments. So this will be, if you win this tournament, you're going to have to fight twice in this night. And then a few months from now, you're going to have to fight Antonio Plaza bot for the interim heavyweight title. Um, and then there's not really an easy road to Rico as they're doing a heavyweight Grand Prix at the end of the year. So if you, if you go through all this war, you fight twice at 85, uh, glory 85. And then you beat Antonio Plaza, but you still have another tournament to potentially become the undisputed heavyweight champion, which is to say it's a fun time for the heavyweight division. We're getting more fights. Everyone's involved in it. It's a fun time for it. Uh, but I will admit that tournaments often lean towards who's the better um, uh, cardio wise. Like it's not always who is the finest fighter. It's who's not injured in their first fight. Who is, uh, who is the best cardio. You know what I'm saying on this? Yeah. Tournaments are not always perfect. Even though I love tournaments, I do love tournaments, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, you're we, right. we were one of the big proponents of like, how do we get glory to be exciting tournaments? Anyway, let's get into it. Uh, we have Luis Tavares is going to be fighting Envy, Enver Slivar. What do you think of this one? What do you make of it? I mean, to me, this is a setup for for Tavares to, 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 to make it to the final. Like I said, I think I I think Tavares is the guy that that they want uh, yeah. to maybe win this thing. So, to me, it's Tavares, man. Like I say, he he is like like the thing is like yeah, I mean, he has he has fought at heavyweight before. Uh, yeah. He was a he was a heavyweight champion over in uh, in Fusion. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I like I said, I I I think it will be Tavares. Uh, maybe a second round stoppage, third round. All right, so you're taking Tavares to win via knockout. And then in the other brackets, let's go to Jafara Wilness versus Kevin Tariq Osaro. Winner, this is a knockout. <laughs> this is, I don't care who you're picking, it's a knockout. What do you th- see in this one? Man, you know me, I've always been a fan of uh, Jafara Wilness. I'm a fan of the Wilness brothers. Uh, he actually he actually answered one of my questions uh, on his, uh, uh, when, 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 when he did the uh, Glory Takeover. Yeah. Uh, but, Man, like I, I, know. I can't I can't go against Cookie because he trained with Ernesto Hoos, man. If you're training with Ernesto Hoos, I gotta show you some love. So I gotta go, I gotta go with Cookie. And plus two, he trains at Mike's gym, another another gym that I like. So I'm going with Cookie. I'm going with Cookie versus Tavares in the finals. Yeah, that's what we got. I agree with you 100% so far. I agree with you. I'm thinking we're getting Ke- Kevin Tariko Saro. I think it's his time. He's coming in. He's the biggest guy in the tournament, the hardest hitter of the tournament. I do see him getting past Jafar Wilness, who is a very skilled fighter. I- inconsistent at times. And but Luis Tavares, uh, like you said, uh, so Luis Tavares versus Kevin Tariko Saro. That's our final. Both of us agree that's the final. How do you see it playing out? And. I know, I know, I know. I, 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 I want to say good even, but again, I just feel like Tavares. The Tavares has slick, has slick movement. Like he's probably like yeah. the, well, probably, probably of the four. He's probably the most, the most agile, the most athletic of the guy. Like uh, 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 of the athletes, you know, of the of the fighters. Yeah. And I just think, again, I just keep saying, I think it's his time. He, I think it will be Luis Tavares getting the job done. I, yeah, this is the thing. I, you know, in a regular fight, I would really be leaning towards Kevin Tariko Zaro just because, like, I'm a big fan of him. I like him a lot. Yeah. And, like, he's a training with Ernesto Host has to be making a difference. Um, 
but I I just made the case that tournaments usually lean towards who's better conditioned. And Kevin Tariq Ozaro struggled in a three round fight um, against the Prince of Kickboxing. I forget his name right now. Yeah. Uh, but his cardio struggled in three rounds. I don't know. He might get a first round knockout and just be fine. And then it's whatever. He's, he's going to go to war against Luis Tavares. Yeah. And those are the kind of things that can happen in tournaments. You know, it's not a surprise if one guy gets a war and then the other guy gets a first round knockout. Yeah, I have to I have to agree and go with the logical pick. I think it's going to be a great final, but yeah, I think we're both making Luis Tavares, right? Yeah, well, because also too, man, who doesn't want Tavares versus Plaza about in June? You know, that's what we want, so. I know. They've already been trash talking at the press conferences and all that exactly. kind of stuff. <sighs> man, it's a fun time to be watching this division. It's a good time. All right, so that is Glory 85. We'll be back next week, same time, to cover that off. Are you ready for some fan questions here? Yes, sir. Let's see. Let's see what the people got for us this week. Tons and tons of questions came in. We did narrow it down to a few that we really did like here. So let's start it off. Tips to uh, tips to cut weight faster while eating good food. Mr. Catino, you you, you got to be the guy here. What, what are some of your weight cutting tips? Nah, I mean, what, what is this course like? You want to make sure that you're eating properly, but also too, man, like you got to make sure that you're um, exercising as well. Like it really... Really, what it is is that you kind of have to work out more than what you than what you than what than what you bring in. All right, so and that'll help you also too, man. Drink water, plenty of water. You stay hydrated because then that because then that's because then that's that's gonna help you sweat, and that's really that's really what you're sweating out is the water, and, that, and that's what you want. So most people really do see you dieting as like right a uh, brown rice, chicken breast, and broccoli. That can't be it, right? Like, what are you eating on a normal week leading up to 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 a, a weigh in? Me personally, I'll tell you this week. This week is my uh, fish week, so I I I, I always alternate it. So, uh, like I said, I will be having so for my dinner is fish, yeah. uh, asparagus, and and um, and rice. But it, but it was but it was actually jasmine rice. It's actually white rice. Uh, but then my lunch, I have pork loin. Uh, I have roasted potatoes. And yeah. I'm not actually sure what my what my vegetable is. But then, but then, like, but then the following week, I'm gonna have chicken. I'm gonna have broccoli, and yeah. I'm gonna have uh, roasted potatoes with that. But then my lunch there is actually ground turkey and rice. It's yeah. like it's like a taco mix, but it's all about seasonings, man. It's all about the seasonings too. You know what, what you put on your seasonings because 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 the the thing I have for lunch it basically is is like as if I was mm. taco. But I just don't have the taco shell, you know, and I just have mm -hmm. rice in there instead of instead of like lettuce. See, and I knew a lot of guys uh, who were cutting weight for for bodybuilding, and they they did they did that same thing of like lean ground turkey uh, and rice. But these guys, I'm not sure if it's a bodybuilding thing or something false, but they were doing no spices. And I couldn't imagine how terrible lean ground turkey and yeah. rice tasted without seasoning, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, 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 like it is different, dude. It's like also because body because bodybuilding and then performance is two different things. Because we, yeah. we cause we've had guys that like I won't say I won't say it was I won't say like name names, but like amateurs where they go eat at this place, and I think the guy like it's a health it's a healthy place, but the guy yeah. who runs it like he is a bodybuilder, and he would kind of give them tips on how to help, you know, make weight and stuff like that. And they would kind of follow his way and mm -hmm. then they would fight and they'd be like drained, no energy because they're not eating really, 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 what, really what they, really what they should eat. Cause I know a lot of people, they, they try to wipe out carbs. I'm like, no, you need carbs. Carbs give you energy. So that's why, that's why, that's why I have the rice. That's why I have the potatoes, you know? And then plus two, man, you know, usually occasionally like on the weekend, you know, you can have, you can have yourself something, Nice, but but nothing, nothing too crazy, you know. I like, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not eating ribs, but I could maybe have myself a like, you know, uh, maybe a, like a, 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 you know, a nice steak. Steak, you know, steak is always good, you know, because that's good mm. protein as well. Well, you are 100 correct though, because because uh, um, bodybuilding typically by the time that these guys have made weight and they're doing the show, they're quite weak. That's usually yep. at their weakest point because it makes their muscles pop. Fighters mm -hmm. want the exact opposite of, I want to cut weight while still maintaining nutrients. So yeah, yep. a lot of carbs, that sort of stuff, man, cutting weight. It's the toughest part of this sport, isn't it? Yeah, man. It's not, it's not fun, man. Especially too, man, when you're, when you're out and about, you know, like I told you, man, you know, I'm at, I'm at, I'm at, I'm at Dave and Buster's uh, you yeah. know, on, on Saturday watching fights and everybody around is, Having having themselves a nice uh, adult beverage, and I'm just here drinking water over here, <laughs> you yeah. know. But but it's all good, you know. It's all it's all good, you know. What I'm saying, you know, you know, they're having wings and uh, and 
and burgers and stuff like that. And I'm just having me some grilled chicken pasta over here. But hey, it's nah. good, so it's tasting good. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seasoning, I feel like, is a must-have. If I ever worked with a coach who was like, yeah, no seasonings, I'd be like, man, I think I might go to another gym who has seasonings. Because yeah, even, even, even like even like, um, like I said, like this week, I say my fish week, like I'm having – yeah. Um, uh, tilapia, but usually sometimes uh, I'll have well, I have a, a a salmon burger, and usually what it oh, yeah. what I'll do is I have the salmon burger, but what it is do I I'll, I'll have it I'll have it on um I have a a barbecue sauce on it, you know, add that flavor. Oh for yeah, me. it still it still tastes good, man. It, I mean, spe- I mean, especially too, if you're if you're, if you're, if you're if you're a seafood person, you know, like me, and like saying like I mean I can eat salmon, but hey man, you put that barbecue sauce on it, it, it tastes even better. Man, that sounds really good. I'm yeah. hungry. I'm gonna make that for dinner. I'm gonna make salmon, salmon and broccoli tonight. That sounds good. Uh, okay, how about something? Uh, what Tom DeBloss is doing surrounding kids being bullied in jiu-jitsu, Do you think more could be done in kickboxing gyms to a similar effect? So Tom DeBloss, I, I wasn't overly familiar with him because um, you know he's in jiu-jitsu and I should learn more about jiu-jitsu and ADCC and stuff like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, but essentially, he is setting up an anti-bullying network. So he's not just giving money to anti-bullying. Um, organizations. He is funding gyms around the United States to take in kids who are being bullied and learn jujitsu. And then the question is saying, like, should kickboxing do something like this? And yes, of course, absolutely. A lot of people um, that we speak with get into kickboxing or mixed martial arts, like uh, Ahmed Sheikh Musa, yeah. for example, who's fighting for a title next in two weeks. He only got into the sport because he was bullied in school. And that's not the only person who says that a lot of people get into the sport because they're bullied in school. And of course, it's not as easy as like learn how to beat people up and don't get bullied. It's never that simple. It's not that simple. There's a lot more going on. But of course, I think it's a great thing. I think that'd be a really cool thing to see. Brandon, what are your thoughts here? Yeah, no, I think I, I think if you're if you're a martial arts, uh, um, I guess, gym, school, whatever you want, like I think you should be involved with something like that. Like I said, I know what I know. What is uh, a couple of the Gracie brothers? I know you. I know. I know. Usually, I know. Usually, like when they find out that somebody's getting bullied, they actually like f- they find that person. They fly them out to their school, have them train with them for like a couple of days. You know, show them a couple of things and stuff like that. Um, actually, something that I actually do do is actually with is actually with my organization. We have we have this thing that is called a uh, bully shield, where we actually mm-hmm. bring kids in. Like like I mean, we have, we have it open to the public, so we have uh, we tell our students, hey, you know, if you got some friends or anything like that, have them come in, and we basically we basically just do a, a whole seminar on how to deal with bullying. And then mm. after that seminar, we actually invite them to come in for a, uh, for a, uh, for a uh, free class as well. So this way, so, you know, so, so this way, so, so this way they can see how to, how to interact with the bully, you know, using words and everything like that. And then mm. also too though, but just in case if it does get physical, then that way they can come in, they can learn how to throw some punches, have a good stance, defend and everything like that. So, I mean, so, so, I mean, I'm all for it. Uh, like I said, I really do wish like more schools would, would kind of do would really, you know, could have something like that. Yeah, man, I think that's awesome that you're doing that. You are actively doing this right now. And I think you would agree that maybe it's not like teach kids how to beat each other up, but teach kids confidence yep. might be the better way of like you are instilling these kids with confidence and that can make a massive difference in their life. Do you, do you agree? Disagree? No, no, you're right. You're right. That's what it, that's really what it is. It's about it's about just them, them, them having the confidence in themselves. Like I tell people, man, it's all about self defense, right? Because mm-hmm. it's not you. Just like saying you're not you. Because otherwise, if you just go around and start punching and kicking people, that makes you the bully. We're not the bully. We, I like I always tell the kids. Like I always tell my students, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, we're not the bullies. We are the good kids. And I and I right. and I always tell them what what type of person am I trying to have you guys become? And they all know the answer, which is a martial artist. And a martial artist is a person that does the right things. They set the example and they help others. And that's. Yeah. Like what I try to do with, you know, saying what, what, what we do with the bully shield and everything like that is just helping others giving back, you know, and you're just doing the right thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's why martial arts at their core, like we are teaching people how to be dangerous with their body, but so much of it has to do with like honor, respect, because if you don't have those things, then you are, you are just beating people up and it's not, you know what I mean? So you have to have something else there to make it just like, we're not just punching people. But yeah, I, I agree. I think that'd be a really cool thing to do. Um, yeah, I think that'd be awesome. Uh, do you think Kaneko and Kimura will fight sometime this year? I thought they'd schedule the fight after KFS. So K- Maza, Masashi Kimura and Akihiro Kaneko fought last year in the finals of the, uh, it was the K1 Super Bantamweight World Grand Prix uh, uh, 
finals. Yeah. Uh, and it was K1's pick for fight of the year. And it was an absolute war. Again, a majority decision. So one, one judge did mark it a draw. And it was an absolute classic. And it's a really good weight class. That's the same weight class with Shiro and a couple other guys in that one as well. <clears throat> the thing is that they did just fight at the end of 2022. So, or sorry, sorry, at the beginning of 2022. No, they fought midway through 2022. So it, like, let's give them a minute. I would love to see them rematch, but I think it would be maybe at the end of the year is where I would expect kind of one of the bigger events because these two uh, have gone and earned a couple of wins uh, making a name for themselves. But yeah, I would expect that kind of at the end of this year. But yeah, I would expect in 2023 at some point, these two are probably going to fight. Brandon, am I, am I off? Am I wrong? Here? No, yeah, no. I was going to say they're probably going to save it for like one of their big shows. Like I said, I know I think yeah. uh, I just saw like, you know, um, saying they just announced that, I guess. Come July is when they're go- when K one is going to do their uh, you know international grand you know a uh, grand prix you know something like that so maybe so maybe so maybe it could be it could be one of those cards or something like that down the road. I I agree with you. I think like you said, it's going to be a big one when they do it. They don't want to just throw that out there. Um, okay, let's move forward. Future plans for K one and the Outlook Kickboxing on the international stage. Yeah, this is something that we did talk about a little bit a few weeks ago when K one bought one of its trademarks back, so it's no longer. K1 Japan group, it can now be K1 International, I believe. And I was saying that I think the reason you struggle, we all struggle to watch K1 outside of Japan is because they didn't have the rights to, to legally do that. And maybe now they do. So I think we are now kind of seeing the seeds being planted for them to move outside of Japan for a bit, as they used to do. K1 used to go to South Korea quite a bit or do more shows kind of in Europe every once in a while. They even did shows in the US, even if it was a slightly different organization, but it still had the K1 name on it. Uh, but yeah, what do you think, Brandon? Yeah, man, I think really what it's about is is um can they get a outside TV deal as well? Because like I said, yeah. for, for, for people like us, we want to be able to watch it, you know, and also too, we want to be able to watch it and understand what's happening as well. But again, I think I really want to say I think maybe what's what they just announced for July, you know, with their with their international, you know, uh tournament coming up where that might that might be the 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 start of it where maybe they're saying you get more you get more outsiders you know, coming in and then that way they'll have them maybe start spreading out and going, going to other places. That's the thing. We're, we're just seeing like the seeds being planted now to do these kinds of things going forward. So I think absolutely we're going to see more K1 in the future uh, doing more things outside of Japan. Uh, okay. And I expected J kick a dark age after the match. Pff, not us. We were optimistic nonstop. That was like, that was a great time, but it seems like Abima is still throwing money at it. And some, some might rub off internationally. Yep. Who do you think wins the Takuru sweepstakes and who would you like to see? Um, I actually didn't realize how much bigger Bailey Sugden is than Takuru. Takuru's going to have a really big size disadvantage. But after this fight, let's say Takuru wins. Yeah. You and I did have a fighter last week and I did. I looked into it a bit more. I, it's not as big of a size disadvantage as I thought. I think Takuru, Jonathan DeBella is still a good fight. Am I, you know, who, who else do you like to see? What do you think of that fight? All that stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, again, like I said, because like Billy Sugden, you, he was in glory and he was fighting at the uh, what the featherweight, which is one one hundred and forty three pounds. Well, yeah, I yeah, like yeah. I think Takura is really what fight at like one thirty two, something like that, right? Something like that, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he usually fights at. So, I mean, I can't remember what what, it, what what I don't remember the exact weight they're meeting. Are they meeting like in the middle, like at well, like one thirty five or something like that, or is or is so- down? Let me, let me look it up because they're putting Bailey Sugden's title on the line. So I'm thinking it's going to be at whatever that title is. And he is holding that title at the uh, 63 kilogram division, which is that is that is higher than where uh, Takuru typically fights. Yeah, 63 kilos. That's the thing of like, I, I was surprised. Right. So that's, how, that yeah. is 138 pounds. 138. OK, OK. Yeah, so they're kind of 38. Still, still, but who after, let's say Takuru wins, he's not really a free agent, but he's backed by uh, sponsorship. He's yeah. backed by corporate money. He can do any, he can go any organization to fight their champions. I do love your your suggestion last week of Jonathan DeBella. Is there some other people in there that you'd like to see? No, nah, I mean, like I said, I mean, I know a lot of talk was about him maybe possibly going to one, you know, him yeah. and Rod Tang going at yeah. it. Um, but yet, yeah, like I'll do him being at one, you know, that's because he, uh, uh, you know our guy, uh, uh Jonathan uh, DeBella as well. So I mean, if he if he was to land at one promotion, one is probably the the one that he would go to because I think he has more more options there. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, like say Glory again, don't have his don't have his weight size. Guys are too big. One, you know, they're in the one forties over here. Uh, yeah. 
you know, so that that's that's the only place where I think he could he can land. Or like I said, I think it's just he'll just go around to other places and just start picking off, you know, champions if he could. I like I said, because I, I think there was talk of him maybe mm-hmm. going to Thailand, doing uh doing some Thai fights as well and stuff like that. So I mean, that's really that's really all I got. It's kind of like either like a raw tank fight or you know, yeah. our guy, uh um uh, a Jonathan Debella. That's the thing. We know one championship beyond any shadow of a doubt was deep in negotiations with Takuru. Uh, it is it, it's it's honestly more of a risk for um, one championship to like put up your champion, put up your title. Potentially, they lose to Takuru, who maybe doesn't fight there ever again. So I I do get that like it is a more of a risk for one championship. But the thing is, I don't know. You just want more people watching kickboxing. You want more crossover. You want all these organizations to do their thing. You know, I I don't know. I just would love to see a little bit more working together. That's always what we've talked about on the show, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, we'll see what happens. Like I said, like I said to me, Takor is a free agent, so it's like he's yes. doing this show at uh, you know um, uh, MTGP, and then after mm-hmm. that, you know, let's see, let's see what he does. Like I said, you know, his deal is really with uh, Abima, it seems like. So, yep. uh, you know, we'll, we'll you know we shall we shall see what happens. Tons of different opportunities for the guy, especially because he's flexible in weight. You just can't go wrong. Like, let's just get it going. All right, Mr. Catino, I think we covered everything we needed to cover off today. Questions. Okay, all that good stuff we did. Brandon, last word goes to you. Talk the folks on out of here. Uh, remember, guys, you know, uh, like, subscribe, share it. And, of course, you know, support us by going going to fightersfirst.shop. You know, get that merch. Say, you know, Tim rocking this Cap Kid Sports hoodie. Me and you rocking my, I'm me, I'm rocking my own shirt today. Uh, you know, it's part of the mechanic collection. But of course, remember, this show itself has merch as well. Remember, you know, you got the kickboxing hoodies, there's t shirts as well. So I'm saying, if you're a fan of kickboxing, you want to support it, please guys hit us up at fightersfirst.shop. And also, too, remember, don't forget, man, write some comments on us too. We like, we, we, we like, we like yeah. interacting with you guys. I know you guys, I know you guys do do it on 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 twitter sometimes you know and the gram but hey if you could man the show's on youtube you know you can leave a comment there as well hey thanks so much yeah send us some questions twitter instagram discord youtube shoot us some questions folks mr Cadino, thanks so much for your time all right